So this is the chapter one uh, of A11 introduction to to boilers. Okay. Now in this uh, this chapter, uh, there's some some objective we have to cover uh, is we we're going to uh, just say we will learn to describe the various types of boiler uh, on the follow aspect. So we're going to take a look at the definition. Uh, the classification and the general uh, construction. Uh, construction. Okay. Now, before we start uh, this, uh, I would like to show you some uh, accident uh, from uh, from uh, the boiler uh, expand uh, exposure. Uh, okay. Now, this is the result of the, the boiler exposure. You see, everything is in you know in a mess. Uh, in in a way, very uh, pretty sight. Uh, no. There's another one. Uh, I I believe this one uh, is the, um, in one of the plants in uh, Southern United States. Uh, in that state, that uh, they do not believe in uh, too much about the operating engineer. In this particular plant, uh, they use a, a, a pipe fitter to operate the, the boiler. So and then something happened, and uh, the whole thing blew up. Uh, you see, this one used to be a, a water to boiler, and the, the front door and the back door can boom off, eh? and that's how it look. And they damaged uh, the building quite quite uh, um, a bit too. Eh? Okay, on this picture there, on the left, uh, you can see a um, water to boiler, and the right hand side uh, at the corner there, there there is a tiny little. Uh, Hot water, the low pressure steam boiler. Uh, the company will make it. Uh, it is um, Fulton. The name of the company is Fulton. Uh, uh, so, so that it, most of the time we just call it Fulton boiler. Uh, it is a fire tube boiler, um, but there is no fire tube inside there. Uh, just a, a couple uh, big wings in there. Uh, okay. Now on this picture there. Uh, on the left hand side is the same uh, a boiler you see in the in our boiler lab. Uh, um, the one on the, the right hand side is called OTSE, one full steam generator. Uh, now they use uh, a lot of these uh, uh, in uh, the northern Alberta to produce wet steam. Uh, so wet steam means it's not 100 percent dry steam uh, only 80 percent uh, steam uh, and then 20 percent is uh, water so the, and they use these uh, to pump it down to the ground uh, dry the oil up uh, the, the, sometimes uh, they, they get to quite a, uh, a big uh, you see you look at that the the person walking by uh, and compared to the boiler you know that is big uh, this thing is quite quite big Okay. Now, and the, the next picture, uh, this one, uh, it is uh, it, it is a, 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 a fire tube boiler. Most of fire tube boiler you see in Canada uh, it is a Kiefer Brook. Uh, either Kiefer Brook or Saskatoon. Uh, so I, I believe this one is a Kiefer Brook boiler. Um, now, these fire tube boilers, they, they are not really big. Uh, uh, the biggest uh, one I ran. Uh, during my career, it's probably around 900 horsepower, 900 boiler horsepower, not not really, not, not really big boiler. Okay. Now let's take a look at the definition of the boiler. Now, so the definition uh, is a cold a vessel in which water is heated, uh, steam is generated, and steam is uh, superheated. Uh, superheat that means uh, you put more energy. Uh, into the steam, uh, so there's a superheat steam, uh, or any a combination uh, uh, under pressure or vacuum. Uh, I underline the vacuum. There's a reason uh, I will um, tell you later on. Uh, by application of heat. Uh. Now, in in TSSA, uh, the operating engineer regulation, uh, that one uh, is free to download. Uh, I recommend everybody go into the TSSA website uh, and download it and paint the copy for yourself. Uh. So the boiler means a uh, five 
the fire in the vessel in which uh, the gas or vapor may be generated, or gas vapor or liquid. Uh, the, the main word is is in here. It's a liquid. May be put under pressure by heating. Uh. Now, so more clearly in the TSSA uh, definition, uh, it said the boiler could be a steam boiler or a uh, hot water boiler. As long as you put enough uh, pressure or heat in there, and make it really, really hot, uh, that is a boiler. Uh, okay. Now the classification, uh, according to to the the code book, uh, um, if there's two different types uh, of the power boiler, one is a steam, uh, another one is hot water. For steam, uh, uh, they classify anything is uh, bigger than 103 uh, kPa, uh, that is a power boiler. Anything small, lower than that uh, is the uh, heating boiler. You may ask, you know, why is 103? That, that odd number, eh? because in the old day, eh, they classify this as a 15 psi. Eh? If you transfer a convert uh, 15 psi, it is a uh, uh, 103.1 kPa. Eh? So that is why. Eh? Now, for hot water boiler, eh? hot water boiler, uh, there are two, two things we list in here. One is the, the pressure, another one is the, the temperature. Eh? So if the hot water boiler, uh, satisfy either one of them uh, will be classified as uh, the power boiler. So if the pressure, uh, you use a pump, pump up the pressure for the uh, the system, uh, it's over the 1.1 uh, MPA, uh, it's just a billion Pascal, uh, that is the power boiler. Anything smaller, uh, it does not satisfy this requirement. Uh. Now another requirement is the temperature. Uh, uh, if the water is higher than 121 degrees C, uh, and that is a power boiler, anything uh, under uh, does not satisfy the, the, the condition. So for the, the hot water boiler, you, you, it has only be satisfied, one of them uh, will be classified uh, a power boiler. Of course, uh, if you satisfy both the condition, uh, of course it is a hot, a hot water a boiler. Now, the construction um, requirement uh, is a whole lot uh, different between the power boiler and the uh, heating boiler. Now, the, the heating boiler, the construction, uh, is not as strict as the power boiler. Uh. So for the power boiler, it is un uh, construct under ASME number one. Uh. Okay, this is a whole lot stricter than uh, ASME four uh, for the, the hot water boiler. Okay. Now let's take a look at the ASME boiler code. Eh? Now we, the human, been using eh, the steam to to do the machinery. Eh? been probably about 250 years. Eh? quite a long time ago. Eh? Now before uh, the 1900, eh, every year they have a uh, thousands eh, of uh, boiler uh, accident. Eh? No, not a hundred, a thousands. Eh? quite a bit of them uh, all over North America, uh, who, a few thousand. Uh. So, and people think, you know, no, or oh, if you pay with the dangerous stuff, uh, for uh, steam, uh, it's dangerous, uh, you expect there's some accident. Uh. This is act of God. Uh. But some people, no, no, they, they don't accept this, this is act of God. Uh. They, they say, you know, if we construct the boiler a little bit better, uh, the accident will disappear. So in 1911, so uh, the Association of uh, Mechanical Engineers uh, in the U.S. Uh, they produced the rule, uh, a set of rule book to for the construction and design of the uh, the boiler. And after this, uh, all the accident uh, dropped down a lot, uh, from a few thousand uh, to probably under 100 and uh, something like that. Uh. So that is a uh, Lots of improvement there. Now I I highlight the design on construction. So even to this day, the ASME code, they only deal with the new design and construction. They do not deal with repair. So if you want to repair, uh, from code book that repair the boiler, you have to go to to uh, 
on NBIC, uh, National Board Inspection Code, uh, or the API uh, 570. Uh, so API is American uh, Petroleum Institution. Uh, so they have something to uh, talk about the, the repair of the boiler. Uh. The CSA B51, they have a little bit too, uh, but not 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 well not very much about the uh, repair of the boiler. Okay. Now the when you design a boiler, there is some criteria and constraint uh, to this. Uh. Now uh, constraint uh, in engineering uh, is something that cannot be changed. As uh, it must do, I uh, have to do this. Uh. Okay. The criteria is a set of uh, conditions. Uh, if you follow this, uh, your boiler will work better. So this one is not a must, uh, but is uh, better for your boiler. Uh, so that is the criteria. Now the first one uh, is a safe and co-compliant. Yeah? To me, uh, that is uh, another criteria. That's a constraint. Uh, so it had to be safe, had to be uh, control under the code. Uh, otherwise, they won't let you run the boiler. So that is the um, a constraint. Uh. Now, number two, if it's on the max heat, uh, heat transfer, uh, so that is a criteria. The better heat transfer and more efficient is, uh, the better chance your, your, your uh, boiler will survive in the market pace. Uh, okay? uh, good water circulation uh, and to reduce overheating. This is um, a, a sort of, a, a, sort of a, a constraint too. Uh, because you know, if you design a boiler, have a little bit uh, popped up uh, a certain part of the boiler, there is no water circulating there. That part will expose the heat all the time. Uh, without water to take away the heat, uh, that part will overheat uh, and the metal will fail in the pan. So good water circulation is really, really important. Uh. A large steam space that is the criteria, because so if your steam space is, is small, eh, if somebody uh, open up a steam turbine or open a big steam valve, eh, all the steam will drain out of your boiler, and then your boiler cannot handle the load. Eh. So but if you have a large steam space, somebody open the turbine, you still have lots of, of steam in there to make up for the, keep a chance of the boiler make it up. Eh, so that is very important. Eh. Now, accessible for inspection, cleaning, and repair, uh, that is um, the important stuff too, uh, because the every high pressure boiler, every year, you, you have to be under ins inspection and, and cleaning. Uh, okay? uh, allowance for thermal expansion and stress, uh, so that is uh, a very, very important criteria, because you know, if you do not provide the uh, the allowance for the, the thermal expansion, eh, you will have the thermal stretch eh, on a certain part. Eh. One side is really, really hot, eh, and the other side really cold. Eh. Thermal stretch eh, will break your boiler. Eh. So that is uh, very important. Eh. Now the category of the the, the boiler, so this one, you know, it, it looks like it's just a uh, steam boiler. Eh. The package boiler, the fuel assemble eh, and fuel erector. Eh. So assemble the the package boiler is everything built in the factory. Eh. Built in the factory, you know, they just ship it to your plant. Eh. You hook up the water, you hook up the steam pipe, hook up the electricity. Eh. Here we go. Eh. You can put it in service in no time. Eh. Fuel assemble eh, is you make some part. Eh. A certain part is making a factory. Eh. You ship it to the site and then uh, put it together. So this one is a uh, whole lot bigger uh, boiler. Eh? Now the fuel erected uh, the boiler. This one is you build everything from scratch. Eh? You or even the the tube eh, connect to the steam drum eh, is do it right on site. This one is a huge boiler. Eh? Now so package boiler is the whole unit eh, is factory built with all the com components, uh, everything is, is done already. Uh, it, you can put it on the skid uh, and ship it to the, uh, the factory. Uh, and then uh, you can produce the steam or hot water. So it could be uh, the fire tube, uh, water tube, 
or one's full steam generator. Uh, the, the is some of the, the one's full steam generator is quite small. Eh? It can fit into the a fat bed truck eh? and ship it by way or, or highway. Eh? Some of them are quite, quite small. Okay. Now, if you build everything in the factory, eh? there's no traveling involved. Eh? Your worker who can build it while you're on the shop, eh? everything is there. You put everything together and the construction cost is, uh, is a whole lot lower. Eh? Now, and they, the, those type of boilers is really small. They're really compact in design. Eh? And it, the variable is really good too. Eh? You can do lots of things with the small design boiler. It's just a small thing. Eh? And they're easy to, to, to transport. Eh? So put it on a flatbed truck eh? or just put it on a wheel car eh? and then you, 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 you can do it. Eh? And now since you build it in the factory, eh? uh, the quality control is a whole lot easier eh? and the testing, everything is easier to do. Eh? The inspector have only go into the one side. Eh? You have all the, the, the testing equipment, not the water pump or something to do the hydrostatic test. Eh? So everything is a whole lot easier. Eh? The quality control is a whole lot better. Eh? No. And uh, for the minimum on-site installation, eh, you save lots of time. Eh? So if you need a boiler, uh, if you want to build it from scratch, eh, it might take you um, a year to do this. Eh? But the for, for the package boiler, eh, you ship it, uh, put it in place, uh, in a matter of days, uh, you can hook it up and then produce steam or hot water. Uh, all you have to do is just hook up a steam line, the water supply line, and electrical, uh, and some sometimes you might put in uh, some air control too, uh, and then you're in business. Uh, really, really, really fast, uh, really, really uh, uh, easy to do. Uh. Now, but uh, the 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 disadvantage uh, is the, the, the main thing is the capacity uh, is really limited, really, really small. Uh. Now, because you have to ship the, the boiler by highway uh, or by the way we roll, uh, so whatever they allow, how wide it is, uh, so that's all you can build. Uh. So in the, uh, uh, for this reason, uh, you see some of the package boiler uh, is really narrow, uh, but it's really, really long. So it's it just a, uh, that is where the wheel car can take lo the longer one, eh? but there's a certain width you have to, to go with. Eh? Okay. Now let's take a look at the, the, those uh, package boiler too. Eh? So package boiler, usually, you know, there's a lot of uh, advantage of these two, right? And uh, there's one of the advantage eh, is you, you don't need too much support. Eh? You, you put uh, a couple uh, a foot of cement uh, block there, cement, put uh, some cement and, and, and uh, a performer, and then you can sit in there because they're light yeah? and everything is easy to do. Huh? Now the few assemble boiler, huh? um, all the major components huh? uh, are built in the factory already. Huh? Uh, they can build as much on the factory as possible. Huh? and then test it. Eh? For example, you know, for, for the steam drum, eh, you can assemble the steam drum, eh, put it there, uh, do the welding, the head, eh, the, the, both the head you can weld it there and do the hydrostatic test eh, before you ship it to the, the, to the side eh, and put it in. Eh? Okay. Uh, uh, so the few installation, eh, you just, all, all you have to do is eh, put, uh, put everything together. So the, the welding and everything is a keep to a minimum. Uh. So most of these the tire boiler is not really big. Uh. Now for small boiler or medium sized boiler, uh, you can just put it on a performer, put a, just a pure cement patch uh, and then sit on top. And then that's it, uh. you don't have to do anything. Uh. Okay. Uh, the package boiler uh, can be a bottom support. Uh. So this one medium size, uh, uh, boiler, you can uh, do the uh, medium size support too. Eh? Now, but for the few erect the boiler, they're really, really large in capacity. Eh? And 
uh, for big operation, uh, such as you know, the general electricity uh, or uh, pump mill, uh, the pump mill or boiler, it's yeah, uh, it, it just like they burn the back liquor. Uh, and they, actually, you know, the pump mill, uh, the back liquor is a chemical process. Uh, and there's a lot of chemical reaction uh, when you burn the, the back liquor in there. And <clears throat> these, the, uh, this one, this type of uh, boiler, I, I've been in, uh, I've been, I have inspect quite a few of them. Uh, so this type of boiler is really, really big. And um, some of them, uh, uh, talk, you talk about a quarter million pounds uh, or 300,000 pounds of steam an hour. It's that big, it can produce uh, so much steam. Uh, so at the boiler we have in the, in, in the steam lab, uh, the water too, probably only 2,000 pounds, 1,000 kg an hour. They, they can put out a quarter million pounds, uh, so there is a whole lot of difference in there. Okay, now. For the, the, this, the boiler that big, uh, if you put it into the platform, uh, it might not work, uh, something might collapse. Uh, so when the thermal stretch, uh, uh, will, there's lots of thermal stretch in there. In, in this case, uh, this type of boiler is so big, uh, uh, the, the, when it, it expands, uh, you need to have room to expand. Uh, usually, this type of, um, of big boiler, uh, they put, they build a big frame first, uh, just uh, uh, use uh, the iron beam uh, to put a frame, uh, and they hang it up, hang the boiler from the top, uh, hang it down. Uh, so in this case, you know, they might have some build something uh, to to um, anchor the steam drum uh, and all the the pipes, uh, the water pipes, uh, 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 which connect the bottom drum, uh, it's just hanging there. So the, the advantage of this one, is if, when when there's an expansion, uh, the, the thermal expansion, uh, the expansion downward, uh, and they can uh, take the thermal expansion quite, uh, quite um, 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 Quite a whole lot better than uh, when you support it on the bottom. Eh? Okay. Now, so all the components eh, and they are assembled eh, on and test on the on site eh, after everything is done. Eh, and then you, you do the hydrostatic test. Eh, if you have to do the X ray eh, ultrasound, eh, you do it right there. Uh, lots of time you have to the ultrasound, the, the well, eh, the wellman, eh, something like that. Eh. Um, some of these one, eh, it just uh, uh, unbelievable, yeah. And I, you can actually call in. Uh, there's a door open. Uh, you call inside there. Uh, it, you can see all the tube. Uh, the tube it could be you know, uh, probably you know a hundred feet uh, long. Uh, the, the, from the top to the bottom. Uh, and one of them, I I've been to quite a few of them. Uh, the the one in Armstrong, a small town in British Columbia, middle of the center of British Columbia. Yeah. So the, you have to take the elevator uh, from the steam, the mud drum uh, on the first floor uh, to the steam drum. Uh, take an elevator five storage uh, before you hit, you reach uh, the steam drum. Uh, so this is a big commitment here. Now I have, uh, I just copied one of the modern steam uh, generator. So this one uh, is. Uh, it, it is a, a few reactor. Eh? You see the, the red color one, eh? that is, the, I just call it, is, that is your um, a frame. Eh? Use the high beam or something like that to get a, a frame. Eh? And then you you hang the whole boiler eh? from the top. In case the expansion, eh? they can expansion sideways eh? and downward. Eh? So this is um, uh, quite, Quite, quite big. Uh. Now from, from the bottom in here to the top, uh, it could be a, a few storage high. Uh. So that, that's really, really, really big. Uh. So modern steam generator. Now let's stay, take a look at the, the common parts of the boiler. The, when it constructs the boiler, there's lots of things, um, pretty much the same thing. Uh. Okay, now the the shell, eh, drum and header, um, are common to oil boiler. No, the, there's a little bit different eh, between the, the shell and drum and header for the fire to boiler and, uh, and, the, and the water to boiler. Eh? So the, 
the water water to boil. They they probably don't have uh, the the head or something like that. Huh? Okay. So the shell uh, is used in the the fire to boil. Okay. And the drum, uh, steam drum, mud drum. Uh, uh, if if you uh, pay close enough, uh, look at the steam lab. Uh, you can see the. The, the small water to boil, uh, there is a steam drum on the top and a small mud drum on the bottom. Uh. So the drum uh, is for the uh, water to boil. The shell uh, is for the uh, fire to boil. Okay, so now this one, uh, uh, it is the, the construction of the, the, you can say, you know, this could, it, it could be the, the, the shell of the, the, the water to boiler too. Eh? So if this one is a water to boiler, that means you know, uh, this one is, is a shell. Eh? After this is built, eh, you put the head eh, on both ends. Eh? That will be put, you just uh, put a, a head on both ends eh? and there will be your, your drum, uh, the a steam drum or the mud drum. Eh? Okay, now, and if this one is a hot water, no, the fire to boiler, eh? This will be the, the shell or the, the boiler, and you have to put the, uh, the, the tubes, the, it's just like the tube sheet on both ends, uh, and put the fire tube in the middle. Uh, okay. Now, each section, uh, and they call it the cores, uh, and then uh, the cores, you just join them together, uh, it become a drum. Uh. Now, you see the Longitudinal uh, joy uh, in this one, uh, you just bend a piece of a uh, big metal and just roll it. Uh, you use a machine to roll it uh, and then wear it together. Now, and when it fails, uh, usually this one uh, is the first one that, that fails. Uh. Now, uh, man, uh, not probably only around 10, 15 years ago, uh, they, they have. Uh, we really big accident uh, in the one of the teaching college, uh, BCIT, uh, a really big college too. Uh. One of those uh, Kiefer Book Boiler uh, Expo, uh, uh, because you know, the just like us, uh, we start the boiler, start and cool it down, start and cool it down. So lots of time, you know, just uh, uh, bending a piece of metal, uh, co working piece of metal, uh, and the seam in here uh, finally give. Uh, Keep and then uh, the whole thing just blow, blow apart. Eh? Okay, and the exact cause, eh? nobody knows. Eh? Lots of people bam, you know, uh, the welding in here is no good. Eh? And somebody bam it on uh, the water treatment is no good. Eh? There's a hot spot, eh? and then the hot, the heat eh? will damage the metal. Eh? Something like that. Okay. Uh, now, so if you want to construct uh, the, the, the shell, eh? You use a big piece of metal uh, and use a machine to roll it uh, as the cylindrical shape. Uh, and then uh, most likely you use a machine to wear it together. Uh, and some of those metal, uh, if there's a really high pressure, uh, it could be a, a inch. Uh, it's just a uh, 2.5 centimeter uh, is a inch. So it could be, you know, five centimeter high. Uh, Thick, uh, really thick. Uh, you probably have to weld this uh, at least 20 times before you can weld the, the piece of metal together. Uh. Now, so if you if this one is long, uh, one cylinder uh, is called a course, okay? And the cores are well together uh, from the shell uh, or the drum. In case is is the fire fire to boiler uh, shell, I uh, just put the a uh, tube sit on both ends, uh, put the tube inside, you're done. Uh. Now, or if this one is a, a, a drum for the water to boil, so that means you have to put the header, uh, cover this on the header, uh, on both ends. Uh. Now, so a little difference uh, between the, the cover on both ends for the different type of boiler, fire tube and water tube. Uh. Now, if this one is a uh, fire tube uh, a boiler, the end cover, eh, it call it a tube sheet. Eh? Now it just a, it, it is a, um, um, a a piece of really thick metal. It, uh, it could be you know a little bit thicker than the sh the shell, eh? and you punch lots of hole in there, so that your your fire tube, eh, the, the strict tube, 
uh, on both ends uh, can be stuck in there, or it could be, you know, used of uh, expand uh, to expand the tube uh, to make it stay in the, the hole in the tube sheet, uh, or you can bend it a little bit uh, and then do some welding in there. So that is the the, the shell. A uh, shell, why do you need a, a couple of uh, tube sheet? Uh, no. Now, so the, the tubes, uh, you just put all the tubes in there um, and then expand it uh, or weld it together. Now, so this is a really good picture of the uh, cutaway picture of the fine tube boiler. Uh. Now, you could see this one is the shell, uh, the shell, the middle one, uh, that is your furnace, uh, is um, a big cylinder, uh, uh, way in the middle, uh, that's where the burner go. You see the where the burner, the burner will go in here. So in your the both end tube sheet, uh, you have to cut all lots of hole in there. This one, uh, the uh, a good size, uh, good size um, uh, five two boiler, you will see probably one at least 50, uh, 50 holes in there, plus the middle hole for the furnace, uh, something like that, uh, and then you put the the front door in there, and the, the back door, and the front door you need lots of insulation, and the back door, and you, you need even more insulation, the refractory insulation, uh, because the fire go this way, and uh, all the fire are shooting in the, at the back. Uh. Now, this is the, the a different type uh, for the head. Um, to cover the, the shell, uh, become a, a steam drum. Uh. The most common one uh, is probably you know, the, the, those three on the top, uh, uh, most uh, common one, uh, common uh, top. And lots of time you may uh, see uh, the, 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 the first one on the lab uh, and the middle one, uh, usually you know, this is uh, uh, the ordinary uh, drum, uh, the steam drum or something like that. Uh. The one on the right, uh, and I see lots of, you know, those are storage tank uh, for the for for the oil field, uh, the, the bullet, uh, uh, use this kind of, uh, and those two uh, are the, the, the conical uh, and a uh, toro and nobody come and use on the boiler. Uh. Okay. Now this picture, is so used, uh, some of them, you see, now you can say this one uh, in the middle, that is your shell. Uh, you put the cover there, you see the, that's a cover, uh, that is the, the dish cover, um, that's the, the head, uh, you just do some welding, weld it in there. Uh, and uh, in here, also saw a manhole, uh, so the manhole, uh, as, as the, uh, as a human being can go into there to, to do the inspection, uh, and if you are a, a forecast engineer, uh, if they ever shut down the, the plan, uh, they probably put you into the the, the drum, uh, the steam drum. Steam drum is not really bad. Uh, steam drum is quite big. Uh. Some of the steam drum you can actually go in there, you can sit in there. Some of them, uh, even you can even stand stand up in there. But the mud drum is a different story. A mud drum is really, really is small. Eh? You cannot even uh, sit down there. You have to crawl down on uh, the hand and knee, eh? something like that. Eh? I compared to the my coworker, eh? I, I I I I'm I'm quite small compared to them. Eh? They all always ask me to go into the the, the mud drum eh? because they cannot go in. <laughs> So uh, this one, uh, you see, uh, it's, it's only one, uh, um, if it's wrong, uh, only 16, 16 inches, uh, 400 uh, mm, uh, uh, if it, it could be 300 by 400, uh, and it's good enough for the, the solder way. Uh, once it's big, bigger than your solder way, you can wiggle in there, no problem. Uh. Now on top of there, uh, there's a lot of small uh, stud, uh, stop, uh, just a small short piece of pie sticking out. Uh. They are there for uh, for some reason, uh, and, and lots of things, you can connect lots of things in there. So on the side there, uh, those things, uh, those are stuck on the side, uh, they can con connect the water tube uh, from the steam drum to the mud drum, you can connect there. So uh, let's say it, it's so anything in there. Uh. So those stuff uh, is called a nozzle. It's, and also, it's just a short piece of pie. Uh, um, most of the time, it's the welded to shell on the drum. Uh, 
and or the hair dye. Hair dye not uh, once in a while you put one in the hair dye too for connecting the chemical. Uh, isn't it? Uh, now they they use for this uh, stuff right uh, is to install pipe fitting. Uh, the steam valve, valve, safety valve, on all sorts of a chemical chemical pump or the the, the piping uh, inside the uh, uh, the bow down pipe, uh, the feed water pipe is somewhere inside there. So that is that what for. Uh. Now the reason why they put the 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 nozzle in there is after you put it there, you can actually do the hydrostatic test in the factory. Uh. You do the hydrostatic test in the factory. Uh, Get everything done, uh, and then ship it to the 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 field, uh, and then you can connect whatever you want to connect there, and and then uh, you don't have to uh, uh, do another set of really high uh, hydrostatic uh, tests. Uh, uh, yeah, because you know if you weld something uh, into the 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 the, the drum itself, uh, and lots of time uh, the city authority may ask you to to do ultrasound, uh, ultrasound or, or the X-ray this, uh, there's lots of work. Uh, but if you have a stub in there already and you just do a, a little welding connect to the stub uh, and then it might a whole lot easier to do the ultrasound uh, way on the stub joy, well joy, uh, then way of the shell. Uh, okay. Now, and lots of things you can connect in there. Now, the common thing you, you find in there is the, the feed water line. Uh, and the uh, chemical fit, uh, which is a really tiny one, uh, and the bowl pipe uh, at the bottom of the, the boiler. Um, you should have seen the, those uh, bowl pipe at the bottom already. Uh. Now the fire tube boiler, we have two, uh, and the water tube boiler have one at the front. Uh, so those one are connect to the, the nozzle. Uh, uh, okay. Now, and some of the nozzle for the water tube boiler, they can connect the, uh, the water tube uh, the water wall tube uh, for the, the water to boiler too. Uh. Now, on the other picture, uh, we see uh, that there is a, a main hole cup, a main hole in there. Uh, you see, there's a main hole. Uh. This is the type of main hole cup uh, in there. So the hand hole cup uh, is almost the same, uh, uh, but it's a little bit uh, smaller. So this one uh, uh, is the uh, 12 inches uh, times uh, uh, 16 inches. Uh, so you need uh, two pieces of yolk. So this one is called yolk. Uh, you see this one, there's a big thing called yolk. And then on inside the yolk, you have some bowl and and, uh, and nut. Uh, so the bowl and nut are to attach to the, the manhole cover. Uh, okay. And then you, you stick it in there and turn it around. Uh, and uh, it takes quite a bit of work, right? it's quite heavy. Yeah? You know, when you put the, the manhole cover into the the, the manhole right? and turn it around right? and pull it out, right? and then you put the, the yoke in there. And sometimes, you know, you need two person to do this. Right? Now for the, the manhole, the handhole open, right? it's a bit smaller. Usually only one, one three to four inches, uh, really, really, really small. Uh, you only need one piece of uh, yolk and a bowl and nut, uh, and the, this one here. Yeah. And of course, uh, you need a gasket in there, both the manhole cover uh, and the handhole cover, you need a piece of gasket. Uh. So the gasket, uh, the material of the gasket, it depends on your application. Uh. If you have the high pressure steam application, uh, you want to use some uh, metallic, uh, metallic uh, gasket. And on the, not, let's say, you know, only a, a 100, 150, 200 degrees here, eh? sometimes you know, they have uh, they have some man-made uh, plastic material, eh? Kellogg material. It's some kind of like plastic, eh? but it's not quite plastic. It's a whole lot stronger than plastic. Eh? They can withstand a couple hundred degrees here. Eh? Also now, the gas cap is, um, you use these to, to to use a gasket. Huh? So the small gasket, they're not really expensive, huh? only one six, seven dollar a piece huh, for the tiny one. Huh? The bigger one costs quite a bit uh, more money, huh? especially those are the metallic one. Huh? Metallic one costs quite, quite a bit money huh? for, for the gasket. Okay. Now the last item on the agenda huh, is the, the tube attachment method. Huh? So for the tube attachment method, um, there's a little bit difference. Huh? 
between the fire tube and uh, the water tube, uh, the water tube, um, you you don't have to be uh, too just like in here. Right? Now you see uh, the fire tube boiler, they expand uh, and they blend for the better seal. Uh, you see, they put the piece of, of fire tube in. This one will be your tube seat. Uh, you put in there, I put the expander to expand it. Uh, now, so that is the expand. That's the expander. Eh? You put the expander in there. Uh, you there's a piece of, in here. You can tighten it a little bit. Eh? When you tighten it, this piece eh, will come out. Eh? Come out. You just keep cranking it. Eh? Just use a pipe to quick cramp quick on this side. Eh? And this piece eh, will come out eh? and roll. Oh, this one the bottom will show you the tube eh? inside the tube. Eh? And when it expand and you keep rolling it, eh? the the piece of metal. You, it will be a little bigger. Uh, so when you put the tube into the tube seat hole, uh, they really snug fit already. So when you use the expander to crank it out a little bit, uh, it will keep it stay there. Mm, that's, that's pretty good. Now, in in this case, uh, now on the, the fire tube, uh, so after you, you crank this, uh, you probably use some tool uh, to bend it over a little bit, uh, bend it over a little bit so that they have a better seal eh? for the fire tube. Um, the, the temperature is quite hot eh? because uh, the, as the definition of eh? fire tube boiler is, that means inside the tube in here, there's fire in there. Eh? It's quite hot, eh? dry and hot too. Eh? So you know the better seal. Eh? And in this case, eh, you pick it out and just beam it over. Eh? And if you want more security, eh? just uh, do some uh, uh, welding in here. Do some welding. Weld a piece of pipe in the tube seat. Eh? Now, for the water tube boiler, uh, all you have to do is just uh, put it in, uh, expand it, uh, and and lots of time, you know, this thing uh, is sticking out uh, at the end. Uh, is sticking out part, you know, uh, pretty much almost, just uh, almost one centimeter sticking out. Uh, so when you call into the steam drum, uh, this one will be poking on your skin all the time. Uh, I, I have lots of this experience. Uh. So water too, they just expand it. Uh, let, leave this one sticking out uh, without beaming it. Uh. Okay, and water uh, fire too, you have to uh, beam it down uh, and then uh, even more, just wear it. Uh. Now, on the sea there, uh, they even have a goof the uh, tube seal. Uh, so that means, oh, they make a wiggly, eh? wiggly, it's not in here, you see the wiggly, eh? uh, so if the, the water want to escape, eh? so they have to go through a library eh? before it come out, eh? so even still, uh, uh, even better. Eh? Okay. Now, it, i seen some of the, uh, those are five, just like the water tube boiler uh, tubes, eh? and when they do some uh, in, inspection there, uh, they, the, the boiler cooled down a little bit already, eh? so they put not, not hot enough water in there. And actually, you know, the, the, the joy eh, between the tube sheet and uh, the tube itself, eh, uh, it lose a little bit, eh? and then water come out, eh? water come out. And the first time I inspect this, uh, I, I, I told the, engineer, the chief engineer, oh, it seems like you have a, uh, a tube leak. Eh? No, he said, no, that's always like this. Eh? But once you uh, you put the heat into there, eh, when the tube expands, eh, it will expand right against the, the, the how it's just a piece of, piece of metal. Eh? In this case, eh, it's not the tube sheet, eh, it is the drum drum housing, uh, and then when it expands there, uh, it's quite tight, uh, you're not going to leak. Uh, okay. So in this chapter, we, we talk a little bit about the, the uh, those uh, construction methods uh, and a little bit about parks. Uh, and later on in the chapter, you will see even more of, of this. Uh. Okay, so and that's it for, for this chapter. Uh, that is quite a uh, quite, quite long chapter, eh? okay?